we were looking at quantitative MRI, again, again as I was speaking before, is it's an interesting concept that we obviously want to be using quantitative MRI, but we're not quite sure how to define meaningful changes in that. And so we specifically looked at in our cohort of patients um, living situation, so living with assistance, living without assistance, or employment disability, and trying to see if there were certain kind of, we could establish cut points in um, these quantitative MRI measures to say, oh, this percentage of patients that had this brain volume above or below um, were more likely to be kind of disabled or need to live with assistance. So it was just kind of a way that when we start to get those quantitative MRI numbers to interpret that in a meaningful life situation. Um, and so we did the, we'd established these cut points with kind of two methodologies too. So we did kind of a traditional linear regression type model that was adjusted for age and disease um, duration. Um, and then we also did a more machine learning decision tree analysis, so, um, which is kind of a more novel method that um, kind of keeps splitting the data in different ways um, to establish these cut points. And so um, it's a little bit more refined. You can account for a lot more things in that. Most of the cut points were very similar between these two methods, um, but it was sort of a first kind of dive into how do we break this data up. Um, and so we just kind of again report on the kind of main changes in T2 lesion volume and whole um, brain fraction um, and kind of saying, well, if you're above this, then you're kind of only 20% 20 20 of people were disabled, where if you were below, this um, whole brain fraction, like 60% of people were disabled. So you can kind of understand that, oh, that probably is a big difference than the average.